There's a reason Cold War bunkers built 70 years ago are still standing, while, you know, many of today's so-called modern shelters collapse after just a decade. During the height of nuclear fear, engineers and civil defence planners leaned on a trick so simple and so effective that it's quietly shaped every durable underground shelter since. Most people online, they talk about blast doors, filtered air, or radiation shielding. Those certainly mattered. But honestly, none of them would have survived decades of pressure shifts, soil movement, groundwater changes, and structural fatigue without the real secret that kept those bunkers intact. Controlled earth pressure management. It wasn't glamorous. It wasn't classified blueprints or, you know, exotic concrete formulas. It was understanding that the ground surrounding a shelter is alive, constantly shifting, pulling, compressing and expanding, and building so the earth works for you instead of crushing you. This technique is why forgotten fallout shelters in Europe, the United States and parts of Asia remain structurally sound, even after 50 years of abandonment. And if you're, well, serious about history or preparedness, mastering this concept today is more relevant than ever, especially as more people build off-grid cabins, root cellars and personal storm shelters. Cold War engineers already solved the biggest problem and their solution still works. The Cold War method relied on shaping the shelter so the surrounding ground distributed pressure instead of concentrating it. When people talk about bunkers, they usually think thick walls and stronger materials. Cold War engineers learned early that thicker didn't always mean safer. What mattered more was how soil loads transferred across the structure. A flat wall against packed earth takes massive lateral pressure, which eventually causes cracks from frost heave, waterlogging or structural creep. To stop this, planners adopted a principle that Roman aqueduct builders used thousands of years earlier. Arching. They curved ceilings, reinforced rounded corners, and avoided long, flat spans because an arch naturally redirects pressure downward and outward, relieving stress instead of absorbing it. That's why Cold War blast shelters often have semicircular ceilings or catenary arches. Even when they look rectangular from the outside, the interior roof is usually curved. The soil above settles, compacts, and, you know, locks the arch into place, strengthening it over time instead of weakening it. For a survivalist applying this today, the lesson is simple. If you build a root cellar or emergency shelter, avoid flat roofs under earth. A barrel vault roof made from reinforced concrete or pre-bent steel ribs will last decades longer, even under minimal maintenance. You can reinforce an arch using simple rebar grids tied together before pouring concrete. Or you can bend corrugated steel roofing into a vault shape and bury it properly. The important part is the curvature. It transforms soil pressure from an enemy into a stabilizing force. Cold war shelters survived because their builders controlled moisture before it reached the structure. Moisture was the silent killer of underground rooms long before bombs or radiation ever became a concern. Engineers in the 1950s and 60s realized that water infiltration caused more bunker failures than structural collapse. Instead of relying on waterproof coatings alone, they layered their defenses. They used drainage channels, gravel beds, outer permeable membranes, and then the actual structural wall. 
The genius of this system was that it didn't try to keep water away by force, it simply redirected it so water never had a chance to sit or freeze against the shelter. You can still see these features in abandoned bunkers today. Many still have dry interior chambers despite years without maintenance. Modern builders who want long-lasting underground rooms can copy this by placing at least a foot of gravel or crushed rock around all buried walls, sloping it downward into a French drain or a perforated pipe exit point. Even a DIY shelter benefits enormously from redirecting groundwater instead of fighting it. Adding a drainage layer takes more effort initially, but it multiplies longevity by orders of magnitude. Reinforcement placement mattered more than total material strength, and it still does today. Cold War bunker blueprints from the United States Federal Civil Defense Administration, the Swiss National Defense Office, and the Soviet GEO Civil Defense Manuals all emphasize the same principle. Reinforcement must counter tension zones. Concrete is incredible under compression, but weak under tension. Underground walls and roofs shift constantly as the soil moves, so engineers placed reinforcing bars where tension naturally forms. The result wasn't overbuilt walls, but intelligently built ones that age gracefully. Even on a small personal project today, like a storm shelter, food cellar, or workshop dug into a hillside, you can follow the same logic. Map where your tension points will be. The inside curve of an arch is one zone. The outer face of a retaining wall is another. Reinforcing those locations prevents micro-cracks from spreading. It's the same approach Cold War builders used, which is why their structures haven't split apart after decades underground. Cold War engineers stabilized the surrounding soil so the earth itself became part of the structure. This method is rarely discussed outside of engineering circles, but, well, it's crucial. Before burying a bunker, they compacted the soil in controlled layers, sometimes mixing sand, gravel or clay, depending on the region. This wasn't done for neatness. It prevented uneven settling, which is actually the biggest long-term threat to any underground chamber. For a modern prepper, the takeaway is simple. Never bury a structure under loose backfill. Compact in thin layers using a tamper or plate compactor. If building into a hill, remove unstable soil until you reach firm subgrade before construction. That small detail, honestly, can add decades of life to your shelter. The longevity of Cold War shelters proves that durability comes from physics, not fear. People often picture Cold War bunkers as overbuilt fortresses, but the truth is far more practical. Their strength came from understanding how earth behaves, how moisture travels, and how materials age. None of these principles require government budgets or military-scale engineering. A private landowner today can apply the exact same logic to build structures that last longer than a lifetime. If you appreciate deep dives into forgotten engineering methods, Cold War survival tactics, and the kind of practical knowledge that still works today, make sure you subscribe to Warfield Survival and share this guide with a fellow history enthusiast. There's a lot more coming, and the next lesson might be the one that changes how you build, plan, or prepare.